All right, everyone, welcome to another installment in this 30 Days of Taker video series. We are on day 16 now. Yeehaw! We're over halfway there. So, as a result, it's Q&A time. And for the Q&As throughout the course of this 30 Days of Taker series, uh, looked at different periods of time in Undertaker's career. The first one started off with his first kind of dead man run, um, his you know original Taker run. The next one was kind of that ministry, corporate ministry run. Now today, we're going to talk about Human Taker. We're going to talk about the American Badass and Big Evil Taker. Ugh. Oh, Lord help me. All right. I can get through this. Got a lot of questions here, so I'm going to try to get through them in rapid fire. Alex, do you remember watching Judgment Day 2000 and seeing Taker with a bike? And if so, what was your first reaction at the time as a 19, 20-year-old? Oh, God, I was 19 at the time. Knew he was coming back. He's here. Like, admittedly, the initial reaction when, you know, the bikes, you heard the bike sounds, and he comes riding down the ramp like it's badass, and you're excited because it's freaking Taker. Then you immediately realize after that night that he's not the dead man anymore. But in that moment, very excited. Afterwards, eh, not so much. MC17 Clark asks, what did you think of the Undertaker versus Mr. McMahon feud going into Survivor Series 2003? To me, it's one of the most underrated feuds in biker taker history. I'm going to follow that up with another question here from James Faluca. He's saying, I'm wondering if you had the same level of joy that I did when Taker announced to the world that he'd be facing Vince McMahon in a buried alive match at Survivor Series. Because the second that match was announced, I knew the true Undertaker was coming back. Bingo! I did like the feud between Vince and Taker towards the tail end of 90, or 2093, goddamn. Getting old, Jeff. 2003. I liked it. And especially because, as you talk about, what's the Buried Alive match happen? I'm like, Vince ain't getting buried alive. Taker's getting buried alive. This gimmick's going to be dead and gone forever, and he's going to come back, and he's going to be the real Undertaker. So I loved it. It's arguably one of my favorite stories during that entire three- to four-year run of him as kind of human Taker because it meant that it was coming to an end. Son Goshiwaku asked, what would you have done from 2000 to 2003 in terms of making The Undertaker's character different from his 99 Ministry in 2004 dead man personas while maintaining the dark supernatural elements? You know, usually I try to be a problem solver and I try to offer up solutions. In this case, just anything other than what they did. And maybe it was... Maybe it was just more about the packaging of they still just kept calling him The Undertaker. Like, maybe if they had changed his name or done something else, like, hey man, go by Mark. Like, maybe it, would have been, it wouldn't have been such a big thing. I don't know. That's just me being petty, perhaps. But I also, I also think a, there's an element here of, as we talk about American Badass Taker and Big Evil Taker, like, is just a time where it just... That wasn't the taker that I grew up on. I know that in doing these videos, I'm talking to a bunch of people, that is the taker that they grew up on. So the experiences or perspectives are vastly different. And I understand that. It doesn't mean that I didn't suck. Horror Movie Review 73. Where do you rank The Undertaker's match with Ric Flair at WrestleMania 18 in terms of best taker WrestleMania matches? Well, I think it's probably at least top 10, isn't it? Yeah, certainly that. I don't know if I would put it in top 5. No. Probably top 10, though. Which isn't bad. You know, Taker had some real stinkers and clunkers over the years at Mania, but he also had some really, really good matches. So I think it's probably top 10, which, based on the number of Mania matches he had, that's not such a bad deal. Kieran Chase, what's your favorite Undertaker match from this era? Survivor Series 2003, wasn't it buried a live match? <laughs> Kane and Vince buried the Undertaker alive. That means that the Big, evil, American, badass, real human taker was gone. It's my favorite match from that era. Period. Yeah. B.W. Roses. 
Do you think this version of Undertaker would have worked better in WCW if the rumors are true of him considering a jump there um, at the time than in WWF? Also, what do you think of his feud with DDP in 2001? You know, ironically, I would have probably liked that gimmick a whole lot more if it was in WCW. Like, I'm kind of with you there. Like, if it was with a different company in a different place, different opponents, like, I think it could have worked a lot better, um, to me anyways. His feud with DDP in 2001 absolutely sucked. It's one of those real times that you look at it and say, well, man, Undertaker really didn't want to work with him. And Undertaker kind of buried him a little bit. Uh, tried to send a message, tried to teach him a lesson. Um, I always thought it was kind of an odd pairing, like, here's who's been stalking his wife. It's freaking DDP. And maybe i got to say this, too. Maybe a lot of what I hate about Taker in 2001 comes out of the fact that, you know, you had a period of time where you had that crappy-ass invasion angle, and in some ways that probably skews my perspective on a lot of things. So, um, that was so bad. I got so, so bad. Gambit190, do you have any favorite moments from this run? If so, what are they? When he got buried alive, and they ended him being real man Mark Calloway Taker. Hell of that. Stupid. Principal NYNB, what did you think of his heel turn in late 2001? Was it just another way to humiliate JR? I don't know if it was all that. But, you know, Taker was a guy that I grew up rooting for for years. I didn't want to boo him. I ended up booing him. And not liking him. But it wasn't for the right reasons. Like, he wasn't getting the right type of heat. It's almost kind of like X-Pac, get the hell off my TV heat. Ugh. Power Spy in one. Thoughts on his ex-wife, Sarah? Really don't have any? I don't know why she was ever incorporating any storylines, but she just had to make the man human. Case 10. Thoughts on the Taker Flair feud around this time? I actually thought it was a decent feud. I'll give him credit for that. Um, once they stopped wasting his time with, with F and Maven, um, and they got towards, you know, like, it's going to be him and Flair heading into WrestleMania. Like, that wasn't bad. That was a decent storyline. Pretty decent WrestleMania match. So I'll give him that. Wrestling Rants. Uh, do you think the American badass and big evil periods of Taker's career helped keep the dead man gimmick fresh, or did they not need to take a break from the dead man and it still would have been well-received? Um, I will say this, in, if nothing else, in defense of the decisions that were made, is it gave significant life to the nostalgia feelings and nostalgia pops for Taker 2004 and after. If you always kept him the exact same or had very little modification or change in his character, like even by the time you would gotten to like 2004, 2005, people would have been largely tired of it. Like that's the reality. Um, so it was necessary to freshen him up. I mean, I like what they did, and I don't like that it happened, but I understand why they did it. And it absolutely had to happen, because I don't know how you would have really sat there and really, truly kept it fresh for another four years, five years. Um, that's just me. Disco Stern. Was there anything redeemable about the American badass gimmick? Yes, it eventually was over. You like that? I'm sure you could bring up things like some of the run with Brothers of Destruction and stuff. Yeah, maybe. And there were some redeeming qualities, but very, very few. But nothing more redeeming as when that part of the gimmick ended. Joseph Moran, do you think the Brothers of Destruction was all about Undertaker? And do you think Taker tried his best to make sure Kane was lost in the shadows? I don't think it was just solely about Taker. Like, Taker's a little bit of a bigger star than Kane, for sure. So you're going to feature and spotlight him just a little bit more. But I don't think it was really a bad showcase for Kane. You know, I think I think they both did pretty well out of it. Um, little DJ boy asks, "Would you like the gimmick more if he went by the name Mark Calloway instead of Undertaker for this time frame?" Yes, something different. I don't know if it needed to be Mark Calloway. Certainly wouldn't have hurt. You know, it, it could have been any number of things. Some type of name change. Um, something might have helped a little bit. I, I it sounds petty, but we're people. We are petty creatures by nature. So it probably would have helped me a little bit. I got, I got to be honest. Mid Carter J, 
Who would you say was Big Taker's biggest rivalry for the from the early 2000s? His biggest rivalry? <laughs> His biggest rivalry was against doing things that made him interesting to me. There were pockets, some of the matches that he did. Um, you know, but that was to me the biggest rivalry. American badass, big evil taker, doing actually relevant, or not relevant, excuse me, interesting things that I would enjoy. That was my biggest rivalry of that time frame. Byron Andreas, if The Undertaker had a female partner or underling like an Alexa Bliss to The Fiend, who would it be? What about somebody like a Nancy Benoit, a China, or an Awesome Kong? Like, well, the people Awesome Kong, really? Ooh. Um... Who would have been like that big bad biker bitch or kind of like that scuzzy leather wearing bar hopping whore? Like who would have been that at that time? Um Oh my god. Huh. Well, you could have went with a hot biker chick. Like you'd have been able to get her in there early or somebody like a Candace Michelle. Um could have maybe done somebody like Stacy Keebler. Like, ignore some of what I was saying, talking about the, the horror stuff. I mean, I was just trying to think of, like, different people at the time. Uh, Major Guns. <laughs> uh, Gorgeous George. <laughs> probably a few you could have chosen from. And maybe that would have helped a little bit, too. Give him a heater. Uh, Diclonius Games. Do you think his ladder match for the WWE Championship with Jeff Hardy was one of his best during his run as Big Evil... Even though he won, Jeff earned his respect after the post-match beatdown. You know, I thought that was a very good match. And it certainly was a star-making kind of spotlight moment for Jeff Hardy. It speaks to why I respect The Undertaker so much. Um, you know, you could have really good matches, and I still don't like the character. Kyle Garner 92. Why was this version of Taker so polarizing? It seems like there's no middle ground. Either liked it or hated it, and there's no in between. And what was your reaction to Maven eliminating Taker in the 2002 Royal Rumble? I thought it was stupid. I think Maven was stupid. Like, oh, especially looking back now. And I may probably have even said over the years on this channel that Maven wasn't that bad. He was. He absolutely was. He absolutely sucked. The fact that they would have him fucking. Eliminate Taker. And then, of course, nothing ever really came of it. Like, I said, oh. Um, why is this version of Taker so polarizing? I think, I think it's a generational thing. I really do. I think it's fans of my generation, slightly older. That's not the Taker we were used to seeing. That's not the Taker we liked. That's not the Taker we wanted to see. For those that didn't have the previous experience, this was the first introduction of Taker. And then later on, when he comes back as the dead man, now it's nostalgia. Now it's cool. Now it's something different. I think it's a generational thing as much as anything else. I really, really do. Um, but that, that could just be me. Uh, Best Buy Rick 1 um, closes out this Q&A by asking, so because of Taker... Is keep rolling, 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 rolling. Your favorite Limp Biscuit song? Now why would you do that? Why would you even? I don't like you guys sometimes. I'm just gonna keep it real. A lot of times I do. You humor me. You give me entertainment value. You give me something to look forward to in my otherwise meaningless, depleted of meaning life. Uh, but then you do stuff like this! Your favorite Limp Biscuit song. Like there should ever be a favorite Limp Biscuit song! It's ridiculous! See, now Best Buy Rick 1 had to go and piss me off at the end of the Q&A. Thank you to everybody except Best Buy Rick 1 for submitting your questions for this Q&A video, all of you except Best Buy Rick 1, who I should make have to do like 500 Hail Hunters just for this egregious behavior, although it's technically not blasphemous, so that doesn't really work. Tune in again.
again for the next installment of the 30 Days of Taker series. And make sure you check out all the other videos on this playlist. Damn it. Do it. Do it now.